So I will show you how to image the tricuspid valve. There are several views where you can get a good image quality. The first view is the parasternal long axis view of the right ventricle. So this is not the view that I'm showing you right now. But it's a view where you tilt the transducer downwards from this view. And then all of a sudden you will get the tricuspid valve. So this is the right ventricle here. This is the right atrium. And this is the tricuspid valve. This would be the anterior leaflet and this is the septal leaflet. And from this view it is often uh, possible to even quantify the maximal TR velocity, especially if you have eccentric TR jets. The second view which is also good to use is the parasternal short axis view. Again, we're somewhere in the region of the aortic valve, so at the base of the heart. Here we have the tricuspid valve, and in this view it is often very nice to see the subvalvular apparatus. You see here, this would be the subvalvular apparatus of the tricuspid valve. And the third view is the four-chamber view, the apical four-chamber view. It is advisable to move the transducer out further lateral and to tilt the septum. You can usually get a much better delineation of the tricuspid valve that way. Try to also bring the transducer as far as you can in the middle of the sector. And then you have the anterior leaf, uh, the septal leaflet here. And this would be either the posterior or the anterior leaflet. You cannot tell simply uh, because it depends on how much you tilt the transducer. If I go further down, it would be more the posterior. If I go further up, it would be the anterior leaflet. So by these three views, it is possible to assess the morphology of the tricuspid valve. Let's take a look at this patient now with respect to his aortic valve. We'll start with the parasternal long axis view. And we can appreciate that the patient has a mildly thickened aortic valve, but there are no calcifications. But we also see that the motion of the aortic valve is abnormal. There is doming of the aortic valve. Here in systole, there's doming of the valve. And in addition, the ascending aorta is also dilated. So this together with the morphology of the valve is almost indicative of a bicuspid aortic valve. And we can exactly see the morphology of the valve here in the short axis view and it's clear that the patient only has two cusps opposed to three. But we also note that the valve opens quite nicely and we do not have the impression that the valve is stenotic. To perform an M-mode measurement of the left ventricle, you need a parasternal long or short axis view. You can actually do it from both. I will show you how to do it from the short axis. So the first thing you have to look into is if the ventricle is really round. This is important. Uh, for the reasons already mentioned. So once you have a nice view of the left ventricle, you will put the M mode exactly through the middle of the left ventricle and optimize the image so that you have a very good contour and then freeze the image and perform the measurement of the septum at diastole. So we have the biggest width of the left ventricle shortly before the QRS complex starts. So this is where you would start with your M-mode measurement of the septum. Then you would measure the end diastolic diameter, the posterior wall. Now all these measurements are diastole and you would then perform the same measurements at systole for the end systolic diameter, for the posterior lateral wall, 
and uh, these are the, the measurements basically that you would perform. How do we actually measure the size of the aorta? I think it's, it should be an integral part of every exam and to really get a good measurement we have to modify the classical parasternal long axis view. This would be the normal long axis view. Uh, if you look at the aorta here you would probably assume that it is normal. However, if you move the transducer up one intercostal space, all of a sudden you will see that we do see much more of the aorta. We see the cranial portions of the aorta. We see the cranial portions of the aorta. And if we measure the aorta, I would recommend the following positions, always at the uh, vicinity where it is the largest, so 40, 41. Then I would measure it at the caudal portion of the ascending aorta, at the sinotubular junction, at the aortic root, and also at the insertion of the aortic valve. So by doing these measurements, you have completely described the size of the aorta and also the shape of the aorta.